All right, so I'm in Silhouette Studio. We're gonna be working with the same kind of topper that I just did for a wedding for some of my friends. Um, I'm also gonna throw in a photo during this of an example of one topper that has the offset and one doesn't, that doesn't, um, just because I'm not gonna recut it for this. So let's go ahead and type out our name first just to get started. So we have the Rulos. And there's a font I use that's really pretty called Felicia, however you want to say it. I'll go to the top left and just fill this in. All right. So we can kind of see right here. And now we're going to do our the. So the way that I do this is I like to make a quick duplicate. Super easy. You just hold down the alt button and click and drag. This makes a copy of it. And so this allows me to keep the color and the font. And now we can set it up for our topper. So let's go ahead and I just hit control A to select everything in that text box and type the. So there's different ways that you can take it with this topper. You can keep your text the same size and kind of stack it like this. For this wedding, I actually made it smaller because I wanted the like rouleaus to be more prominent. So let's zoom in and we have our the here. So we have some issues because if we overlap it like this like we normally do for toppers it gets a little bit crowded so I follow the kind of train of thought that we can draw small little rectangles to connect these areas the reason why we want to do that is we want to keep it stable if we have our the hovering over rouleaus then this is only connected by this tiny little piece and so you're very very prone to breaking it so I don't want that we're going to go over here and draw a rectangle and we're going to do a very small one and draw one like this. Basically you want it to be the same size or smaller as your font. And actually I'm going to not weld it quite yet so I can show you some of the offset stuff. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and take this. I'm going to do my control alt to, oops, I just hit the space button my alt to make a copy so you can really see the difference in what we're working with. All right, so you can see we have our text here and we have two versions here. So I'm going to show you kind of the difference in them um, for when we go and make our topper. So for this first one, I'm not gonna make any changes. I'm just gonna right click and weld. So all these overlapping areas are joined and then we need to go in and join our O to our R. So you can drag this over and have it touch like this, but I don't necessarily like that. So I'm going to do the rectangle trick again. We're going to draw a small one, kind of bring it over here. Let me zoom in. And so what we're going to do is we're going to try to make this look as close to just the the text as possible. So I'm going to bring my rectangle to the corner. Let me fill it in so you can see the color to the corner here. And one trick is we can use our center of rotation. So the majority of you hate this and you turn it off. Um, I just ignore it until times like this where I need it. I'm going to click and drag this to the bottom of my design. So basically this is the axis that your object is going to rotate on when you hit the screen button. So now I'm going to take this and now I know it's in the right spot. I'm going to use my arrows to bring it over a little bit more because it was overlapping there. And then I'm just going to shrink it down like this. Okay. So now this is right in the, the area that we need it to be. I'm just adjusting a little bit more to look like it's going into this curve. Now let's zoom out and I'll show you what it looks like. And then weld. So you can see we have it right there. I'm actually gonna go back because I think it's going up too high. So let's zoom back in. And rotate it kind of like this. Then bring it down. Let's try it one more time. Okay, so I'm happy with this. You kind of have to keep in mind that this is just like a topper that we have going on right here. So now we're gonna go over here and here is our original. So if we, we were to do this, it'll be, it's fine and it looks okay on the screen, but when we go to cut it, it's gonna be very thin and brittle. So let me show you how I adjust this to make it work for, um, for a cake topper. So we're gonna grab this. I'm just gonna get my text, not my little joining bar. 
and we're going to go to our offset panel and do offset and we're going to start really really small um this doesn't look too bad 0 0.030 so let's hit apply and i'm going to fill this in a different color so you can really see the difference so you can see it looks a lot thicker but we do have areas where we kind of lost the inside. So you see right there, we lost the inside of our the rouleaus. So what I like to do is I like to thicken up the inside part of our letters to give it more space. And the way we do that is we're gonna break apart our original text and use parts of that to, um, to kind of cut out from the inside. So let's click our the to start. We're gonna weld it. And let me make my line color black for it and turn off the fill so we don't get too confused. So here's our outline. I'm going to right click on our original one and release compound path. So you can see we have these separate uh, squares for all of them. Let's go ahead and hit this inside one. Just click until you get it. It's kind of difficult. Hold down shift, grab this background, Go to our modify panel and subtract. So now we have more of an opening with our the, and we can even do it with um, different parts of it. So if we wanted this opening here, we could do it. Um, let's go ahead and grab this inside part, grab that offset, subtract. So now we have these openings going on in here. And so our, our text overall is still thickened from the offset, but now we have that space in there. So we can kind of move this to the side. So that the still looks good. Don't forget when it cuts, you're gonna get it trimmed in a little bit. So don't worry about it looking too bubbly over there. This is how I set it up for that topper and I'll throw a picture up so you can see it will be fine. So if you really wanted to, let me hit Control Z. Let me hold down Shift and subtract this one. So we have a little bit more definition going in there. All right, so now we're just gonna repeat the process with this. It's just the same thing. We're basically just making more space on the inside to help with our thickened font. So this one right here, we can just delete it. Oops, nope. So we still have our text in here. It's not welded. So we're just gonna go over and choose our text. We know we have our text here because you can see it up there. Let's weld. And then with this R, we don't need to do anything, so we'll just delete it. And then we'll grab our text in here, right click, release compound path. Again, multiple squares in here, different objects. So you can see, let's zoom in on this O, you can see this is the inside part of it that was made through the offset, and this is the inside part of our original. So we're just gonna make a little bit more space on the inside. So we grab that, hold down shift, subtract, so you can see we've opened that up more and I'm just gonna keep repeating it with this process. Now what you could do is you could start kind of grabbing these inside parts, holding down shift and grabbing them so that you can have multiple at a time. But for the sake of the video, I'm gonna do them one at a time just so you can see the difference. The L we don't necessarily need, so you can leave that if you want to. And let me show you with grabbing multiples. So hold down shift, click, shift, click. So we have all three here. We're gonna right click, oops, do it again. Shift, click, shift, click, shift, click. I would do control G, do a shortcut. So now all three are grouped together. You can tell because there's only one box. Hold down shift, click on your background. So now you have that and your background selected and then subtract. Okay, so now we have our thicker font. You can see it's still legible, but look at the difference between these two. It just gives you a little bit more extra. So now we're gonna work on our little joining block. I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker just because I want it to be substantial and keep it together. And then same thing, Alt, click and drag, make my duplicate. And now we can pop this over here and do the same thing with our center of rotation. And this one will probably, oops, this one will probably need a little bit more editing. Let's drag it over here. And let's rotate it a little bit more so it's not as high. 
Yep. And again, when you do this, like you may look at it and think, wow, this is really edited. I'm really changing it apart. But don't forget when it's on the cake topper or it's like on display, no one sees the original. So they don't know how altered it is. They just think it's a pretty topper. Like you're going to be your own worst critic in this. So let me select all of these. And I'm going to fill it in with this like tealy blue color just to see what it looks like overall. I'm pretty happy with that. So let's grab everything here and weld. So again, we have those joining pieces, but it's to keep it steady. And then at the very end, you can do your, you can resize this. So this, so this is pretty good. Seven inches is, you know, a standard size for the cakes that I normally do. And then you can do your stick. So um, you'll do your stick, um, whatever height you want. Most of the time I do it around four to five inches high. So it can go into the cake a little bit more or have space at the top. So I'll do five inches and then I do it at an eighth of an inch wide. So that's 0 0.125. Hit enter. Then we have it set right here. So this dip in the L is a good spot for your stick. You can choose what you'd like. You can even do two spots if you want. But then you'll go over here, weld, and now you're all set to go. So I'll put up the picture of what it looked like on the cake. It looked really good um, and don't forget you know when you cut it that like bulky thickness definitely goes away because you're kind of um, setting it in there. Now one thing I would do is look at keep an eye on these spots. They may need to be thickened up a little bit but overall I think it works out really well and I'll put up a picture of another example of the side by side so you can see it. So thank you so much for watching this. If you like this, please give it a like. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any more uploads. And if you would like to get a Glowforge of your own, you can check out the link in the description below to save up to $500 on a new machine. And also, if you like this design training, you can check out the link below. I do offer one-on-one -on -one sessions. I can help you get started with your silhouette and kind of master designing so you can really, really take off with your Glowforge.